you, Mr. Goldthorpe. Good evening. I would like to welcome Clarkson's graduating class of 2011. Four years ago, this night seemed at least a million years away. And yet, here we are. I would also like to welcome and thank all parents, teachers, and faculty who helped us make it this far. I can say with 100% certainty that this room would be completely empty if it weren't for the endless hours you spent making our lives as easy and sometimes as difficult as possible. Though I'm sure you'll all agree, looking at this marvelous bunch of students, that all the effort was well worth it in the end. Now, graduates, as your final test in high school, I would like to challenge you all to think of one thing that has not changed since grade nine. However, if your teenage brains all work the same way as mine, you will not think of the things that have not changed, like I asked, but rather the complete opposite. You will think of how much smaller the school seems now than it did on your first day of grade nine. No longer does Clarkson feel like a giant death trap with an infinite number of hallways all leading everywhere you did not want to go. You may think of how many different pairs of Clarkson sweats you've burned through in four years. You may think of how many best friends you've burned through in four years. <laughs> and although Ms. PB threatens to fail us if we use the word different in our work, there really are more than enough things that are different now than they were at the start of our journey through Clarkson. Now, if we return to my original question, I do have a particular answer in mind. One thing that has remained a constant throughout high school is essays. Uh, specifically, the classic five paragraph essay, Thank You, History, Modern, and English Department. I know that may seem like a pretty anticlimactic answer, but bear with me. You may be surprised. You see, the process of writing an essay is a lot like the process of going through high school. You start by writing your introduction, grade nine. You're just trying to get all of your ideas in order, and you really have no idea how the rest of the paper is going to go. The introduction is always the hardest to write because there's a learning curve, just like in grade nine. We were all scared little boys and girls. We didn't know our way around. We didn't know what a cancer drive was or how to dress for spirit days. Like our essay, it was all just a giant mess of information that we furiously tried to organize in an effort to make it into something we could actually understand. After the introduction of an essay, the first paragraph is a piece of cake. So in grade 10, we all walked around as if we owned the school. We stuck up our noses as if to say, yeah, I made it through grade nine. I can do anything. But we were obviously way too cool for spirit days and looked down upon those fresh little niners with a mixture of contempt and pity, somehow forgetting that only a few short months ago, we had been in their shoes. Third paragraph, it's almost as easy, but by now you're starting to scramble a little bit for ideas. And I'm pretty sure all of us can relate to this. It's the end of grade 11. You've worked harder than you ever have in your whole life studying for your final exams. After what seems like a lifetime of what I like to call the three C's of exam week, crying, cramming, and counting the days until the torture is finally over, you hand in your last exam. You feel like you're on top of the world for about five minutes when it hits you. We still have a whole other year. When will this madness end? <laughs> Fortunately though, we quickly forget about this madness as we are distracted by the wild and incredible experience that is the senior year of high school. Which brings us to our final body paragraph in the essay that is Clarkson. Grade 12. Before it even begins, everyone knows that it's a big deal. There's an energy about it that's totally unlike grade 9, 10, or 11. I recall walking through the front doors on the first day of school and thinking, wow, this is it. The final year. It was the first day of one of the most outrageous years of our lives, starting right off the bat with grade 9, 12 activity day where we all had the opportunity to show those terrified grade nines that high school doesn't have to be scary. Although, I'm not sure how convinced they were after we made them 
piggyback each other around, crawl between each other's legs and be involved in all sorts of other ridiculous shenanigans. Of course, I'm positive that you all signed up for grade 9, 12 activity day to pass on your elderly wisdom. And not just so you could get out of class for the afternoon with an excuse to play outside. That was the first day where I truly noticed how we, the class of 2011, were starting to come together. It showed especially during football season, when our outstanding chargers tore up each and every field they walked onto. I noticed that we were all out there for every game, whether it was a buyout or not cheering our boys on, win or lose. And we were all over the moon when our girls flag football team brought home the first ROPS of gold medal in over 13 years. This year also marked an exciting year for the drama department when our dramatic chargers took the stage by storm, making it to regionals with their fantastically hilarious rendition of Take 5. Over the course of the year, it was as though we all started to become more like a family, the social groups that seemed to define and segregate us all throughout the previous three years became less and less noticeable. It was obvious during March Madness when every day, consistently, we were the ones wearing our jerseys, dressing like celebrities, and showing the most CLK spirit out of any of the grades. During Cancer Drive, I know that at least a third of that $21,000 total was from us. And despite all the craziness involving limos, dates and dresses, there's no way our night of elegance could have been anywhere near as special if we weren't all genuinely happy to have our entire grade there. Grade 12 is a whirlwind. It's hard. It's stressful. It makes you feel as though the world is going to end if you don't get good enough grades to get to a good enough school, to get a good enough job, to have a good enough life. But don't worry, because we're not there yet. <laughs> Since we're still not quite done our essay, let's get to the conclusion. The concluding paragraph is where you revisit all your points and bring all your ideas together. You summarize what you've learned throughout the experience. So what have we learned? Maybe that working on an enormous project for half an hour a night is much better than working on it for seven hours straight the night before it's due. That there really is no way to avoid falling asleep during first period, no matter how early you go to bed. And I think we've all learned that there is a direct correlation between the amount of time one spends on Facebook and how well they do in all of their courses. <laughs> but perhaps the most important thing learned in high school is not learned in the classrooms. In the grand scheme of things, high school is but four years. A stepping stone, one building block out of a thousand, which are going to construct our giant towers of life. I think the most important thing learned in high school is not math or science or even how to write a standard five paragraph essay. It's learning that real life is waiting for us right outside of those doors. Standing here right now, I can't quite believe that this is the last time we'll all be together. As much as these past four years seemed to drag on while we were doing projects, studying for exams and writing essays, I feel like I blinked and now it's all coming to an end. We're all headed our separate ways, some near, some far, but no matter where we end up, I know that the four years spent at Clarkson will not soon be forgotten because as much as some of us would like to deny it, Clarkson helped shape each and every one of us into the people we are today. The building block with chargers written across it is an important part of the foundation in all of our giant towers of life. So, as the final concluding point in our essay and in the speech, I would like to leave you all with a piece of advice that could not be said any better than by the great Dr. Seuss himself. <laughs> Chargers, be sure where you step, step with great care and great tact, and remember that life is a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarter percent guaranteed. Chargers, you'll move mountains. We are the class of 2011, and that's never going to happen again.
Congratulations, grads. Take this all in and go find your mountains. Thank you. and the AV crew, pals, and next year's student council. Before we have the recessional, I would also like to invite you to join us for refreshments in the front foyer and in front of the library, so we'll be able to use both doors at the end. I would ask now that you please rise and honor our graduates by remaining at your seats as we formally leave you this evening. And now I was going to say, ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the grads of 2011. Thank you. 